Groove started in 1977. It's a TV miniseries. There are six parts. Um, you have a lot of famous people that guest starred on the Roots mini TV miniseries. A lot of famous people actually in the 1970s. Uh, Todd Bridges from Different Strokes was on the Roots. O.J. Simpson, you know, we all know about O.J. Simpson and what happened to him in, 19, in 1994. You had Cecily Tyson. She's in the first part of Roots. You have uh, Vereen, the guy. Who was that guy? Um, the dark-skinned guy that played Chicken George. I know he was on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Will's father. What come you don't love me, man? What come you don't love me? But, yeah, I mean, I think his name is George Vereen. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of other people, too. Um, the man who played on the Jackson 5 movie. Remember that 1992 movie where a documentary about uh, Michael Jackson's life? The father plays um, Kizzy's boy. Kizzy's boyfriend is played by the guy who was in that movie. Um, I don't even remember. I know Michael Jackson's. He made a movie in, in the early 90s. You all know who I'm talking about. There's also a lot of uh, a, a lot of other famous people who guest star. The guy from the Waltons played the white angry white slave catcher. You know the 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 annoying uh, angry violent on the ship. You know. The guy from the Waltons, the white, the white, the father from the Waltons, the white guy. But anyway, I've been, a, I've been, I've been a fan of Roots TV, TV miniseries for over since two thousand three. So I'll say about se over seventeen years. I started watching I, the first time I watched Roots. When I, I was twelve years old. This was in ninth, oh my God, two thousand three, two thousand three, February two thousand three, Black History Month, and then I was about twelve years old, little four foot tall guy. I was little, you know, a little small little kid, but um. And I saw it by accident. It was on the Hallmark Channel. The Hallmark Hallmark Channel was 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 playing a lot of African American movies. Roots. They actually had six parts coming on every night. I I I was glued to it. I ne had never seen anything. I never seen racism. I was twelve years old. So when I saw what you know what you know black people been through, I didn't know. I didn't understand black people's struggle in life. You know, I knew I was a black guy growing up in life, but I didn't know the struggles of African Americans. You know, I didn't know the history. This this the the six part miniseries describes what African American men and women went through in those times back you know back in the 16, 1700s, 1800s. It was hell you know they went through a lot. You know black men were abused, humiliated. Black women were raped, uh, mistreated, neglected. You know they would have to be out there co picking cotton. But anyway, I saw I first saw Roots, the, um, the TV miniseries six part. On the Hallmark Channel, which is very edited, they edited out. It was uncut, uncut. I'm gonna say I can't say edited. It was uncut. Um, the the first part one is very, very, very emotional. You at the beginning you see a lot of African, you see African women walking around, and then you see, it's nudity. It has a lot of nudity. You see, you know, boobs hanging out, black women. You know, it all it's a lot of nudity. Then you see Cecily Tyson, who is Kunta Kinte's mother. She starts giving birth. <laughs> Making these strange noises. It's very, very uncomfortable, very awkward, and very disturbing. But a lot of African, you know, it, I guess a lot of African women back in those times had, you know, had, had, had you know, were, were, didn't have, we didn't have doctor, you know, there, there was no doctors. So a lot of black, um, African women would have to give birth to the babies by themselves, you know, um, you know, back then there were no doctors, doc, doctors for pregnant women. But uh, she gives birth to, Kunta, she calls him Kunta Kente, Kunta Kente. Grows up, I think he's about 15, 16. He does manhood training. Um, he's Kunta Kente is very is not shy. He's very extrovert. He's very outgoing, confident, manly, fearless. You know, competitive. He doesn't give up. He, he just keeps going at it, hard working. He, you know, he's one of those guys who's gonna be the, you know, the 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 king of Africa. You know, he was so confident. Um, there's a scene where there's a tall black man, bald clean shave head, bald head, and he starts wrestling the, the tall guy. He was about 6'5", and he kept he kept flying on the floor. Um, manhood training, they, they teach, and this this is true, uh, in Africa they teach, by the time the, the boy hit, reached maturity, puberty, by 15, 16, by the time he reaches the age of 15, 16, he's a man. You know, he has the body of a man, he has the voice of a man, you know, he has feeling, sexual urges like a man. Manhood training, you know, 15, 16. You know, a lot of boys are becoming bigger, stronger, muscular. Their bodies are changing, you know. So, by the, you know, by the time Kunta is 15, 16, he's going through adolescence. So, he has manhood training. They teach 
uh, boys, how to become men, how to survive in the world. You know, um, by the time they're 18, they are kicked out of it. They don't live with their parents. But, you know, they, it's not like now, where, you know, you got people 30, 40 years old, 50 years old living with the parents. By the time a kid reaches about 17, 18, the parents throw him out. You know, he has to live on his own. He has to find his own house, his own hut. You know, he gets his own place. Um, you know, his mother tries to protect him, but he tells he tells his mother, uh, a woman should not tell a man what to do. He has a pretty good life. Everything is going pretty good. He actually kills a lion. You know, his friend makes a bet with him that he can't, you know, can't get a lion. You know, he he kills a lion with a um, slingshot. <laughs> with a slingshot. He's, I mean, Kunta Kinta is the most confident guy you ever meet. Um, there's a scene, O.J. Simpson is in part one. He's O.J. Simpson, you know, we all know O.J. Simpson is a football player. O.J. Simpson was a professional football player in the uh, 70s, 80s, uh, when he was in his 30s, you know, 20s, 30s, you know, I think 60s, late 60s, 70s, 80s, around there. You know, he all, you know, but O.J. Simpson was very popular before 1994. His whole life changed, and people started saying these negative things about him, which we, to this day, we don't really know if it's true or not. You know, we don't have, there's no, there has never been really any evidence to prove that he did any of the, you know, that he did it, you know, but, um, by him, there's a scene where he, where Kunta Kente is trying, is trying to catch a goose. He has to catch a goose and bring it back to, to his manhood training, to his master, the guy who gives him a, he gives him instructions to go get a goose. And he tried, he actually catches the goose. I mean, I'm going too far, but he, but by the time he, you know, he's trying to catch a goose, he trips over a, a woman named Fanta. You know, Fanta is very pretty African girl. Accidentally, he's running. He didn't see Fanta. He trips over Fanta. Her, her, she starts screaming. She starts getting nervous. He's, he's a guy. You know, he's black. He's a guy. She didn't know. She didn't know if he was trying to molest her or he was trying to attack her or rape her. But her father comes out running. He starts running. He gets. I mean, Kunta gets nervous. He starts running. Her father starts running after Kunta Kente. You know, and Kunta is running faster than he's ever run in his life. And then her father is running past Kunta, and then he runs around, put his arm around Kunta Kente, and try and threatens Kunta Kente. He says, "You run over, you know, you push over, push my daughter around, you knock over my food, her water, you know." He has, you know, he tells him to go apologize to his daughter. You know, Kunta Kente has an attitude, and he has apologized to her, her, his daughter, and him. Then he goes about his business. He actually catches the uh, the goose because he's so confident. He does not give up. You got guys like that. That he's the alpha. You know, you got guys like that in real life who, are, who don't give up. They're very, very, very confident, and they, they will get, do whatever they can to get what they're going to get. Um, he actually catches the goose. He sees a white man. He had never seen it before in his life. You know, he you know he saw a, a group of white guys, uh, white men. With, 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 he saw Africans with chains on them. He'd never seen white men before in his life. So it was weird for him to see men of another color. These were different, you know. And he was very nervous to the point where he didn't even get the goose. His mind was on seeing those white men. He also saw his people, his African people, crying and in tor and pain and torture and chains, you know. And then he went back to his manhood training and told the master. And the master gave the the other boys warning, the other African boys warning, Kunta warning that don't go out, stay by your family, don't go wandering in the woods by yourself, you know. He meet Kuta Kente meets his grandmother. His grandmother tells his birth. Um, I don't know. I think Kuta Kente's brother is ha is about to have a birthday, so Kuta Kente is 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 told by his grandmother to go out and get make him a drum, you know, go out and get make a, a set of wood and and make some drums. So Kuta Kente goes out, does that, and um, yeah, he actually ended up getting caught, captured by a black, a black, a couple of black guys, big, strong black guys, about six feet tall, bigger than him, because he's about five, six, five, seven. It's a little black guy. He's a big, strong black black man. You know, they try, they chase him, and they, you know, he's running for his life. He, they put chains on him, and he's crying. Him and Fanta actually end up getting caught, and they, she starts crying, and she, you know, and uh, they go on a ship. They struggle. Uh, there, you know, you, Kunta Kinte sees a lot of bad things happen to people, African people on the ship. There's a, a fight on the ship between the Africans and the white slave catchers, you know, and, you know, there's a fight going on and, the, and the, you know, a white guy bombs, the, you know, the ship, 
you know, the people on the ship, you know, that, and, and it's, it's a very long story. Kunta Kente is sold in this one. He, um, he, Kunta Kente is sold uh, to a white owner, but that's probably in part two. But part one, you know, is basically where him and the African, his African got friend from the manhood training, they, they, they come together and be free. Well, too, the black guys, the, the bald head black guy says, well, too, we will, we will be free. You know, we will beat them. Well, too, you know, but anyway, that's part two. I'll get to that one. But this is the, this Roots part one is very, very, very good. Probably one of my favorite, favorite ones of the series. Uh, besides parts five and six, you know, those are pretty good. But anyway, Mr. J here, peace.